and we are live. Thank you. So, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Streaming School. Those of you who are rather observant will notice that my name is not Leon Haley, it's Michael, the uh, individual you see thrice per week to do your English sessions. And I have the honor and privilege of essentially working with Niche. Jackson and many other people on a Tuesday and Thursday now to take you through the day's learning. As I've already highlighted, Jackson, how are you, sir? I am doing very well, thank you. Good morning, good morning. It's nice for you to host me today because I've been looking forward to seeing your bow tie. Yeah, thank you. I actually got a couple. I've actually got a couple more on the locker. Yeah. Uh, I got the other. Yeah, I can't you know, some people collection hags, yeah. mine buys the pockets, wow. I'll be honest, thanks, mate. It's motivating. Uh, <laughs> I need motivating, and I, I assume that's why you're here. In the, <laughs> in the world. All right, man, thank you. I look forward to it. Excellent stuff. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Action Jackson. I am a motivational speaker. And I have the privilege of being able to be the morning motivator here at Free Streaming School. I love this uh, opportunity to be able to get into your mind to put a smile on your face. If you've never seen me before, I'm a motivational speaker, as I said. I'm the UK ambassador for happiness. And if you are returning to a Free Streaming School, welcome back. Now, I always kick off the show with high energy. And the reason why I say that is this. Your thoughts will affect your emotions. Your emotions will affect your action, and your actions will affect your results. I'll let that settle into your mind. Your mind is everything. With that said, there's a phrase here that says, I am amazing. No, 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 not just me, you. Yes, many people don't accept how amazing they are. They tend to push aside all the good, and they attract the bad. It doesn't make sense. But I realize that the brain is wired in such a way whereby we need five positive things to get rid of one negative thought. If you have one negative thought in your head, you need five positive things to get rid of it. So with that said, I just want you to join me with our morning warm-up. And the phrase is very simple. I am amazing. And then you bounce your shoulders. I am amazing. Put that grin on your face. Put that grin on your face. I am amazing. Sway. Sway. I am amazing. Don't be shy. No one can see you. I am amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, the reason why I always start with that phrase is because it tunes your mind to positivity. Imagine if I woke up every morning and I said, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm never going to make it. I'm commanding negativity. But when you use this kind of phrase, you're commanding positivity. So the question I want to ask you today is this. Who would I like to be? Who would I like to be? Many people tend to focus on the negative. This is the most powerful question that you could ever ask yourself. Who would I like to be? Now, many times you tend to think about the things you've missed out on, the things that you are rubbish at. Remember, I told you, the brain moves towards negativity more than positivity. So you need to redirect your brain. Say, no, brain. From now on, I will give you what to focus on. And this is why you need to ask yourself, who would I like to be? Me, I would like to be amazing. I would like to be able to make the world laugh and be happy. That's why today I'm going to be talking about how you see yourself. See, what matters the most is how you see yourself. I don't care what other people think about me. I care about what I think about myself. My question to you today is this. How do you see yourself? It's a very powerful question. Because oftentimes, you don't see the positive, you see the negative. You're going to shift it now. So I want you to create a vision board. Yes. A vision board is a board of vision. <laughs> now, you can do a digital version. All you do is go on your phone and go, remember I asked that question, who would I like to be? Now, if I would like to be, like, for instance, I'll give you my personal one. I am going to be, I'm going to explain why I've stated it that way. I'm going to be. UK's number one TV show host, and I'm gonna have the number one motivational talk show in the UK. So what I'll do, I'll go into Google, and I'll type in TV show, and I'll copy the picture, and I'll create a folder. 
Now, the more you look at what you want to be, the more you're likely to be that thing. If you don't place a picture in front of you, the world will place their picture in front of you. So you need to create a picture of the things you like to be. So here's an example. Um, what picture would you like for your fitness? What picture would you like for your reputation, travel, adventure? What are the things you would love in your life? Go and collect the pictures that represent who you would like to be. I'm sure this is making sense because whatever you do, vision is so important. There's a couple of ones that I've seen online that are really powerful. You can use words to encapsulate what you really want to become. Here's someone who wants to be a gymnast and she's collected all the pictures. Practice makes perfect. Passion, dream. You see that? Imagine if you wake up every morning and you're looking at this. How do you think you're going to feel? Yeah? So the bigger the dream, the better. Trust me. Whatever you do, bear that in mind. You're amazing. And the only way we can maintain that amazing mindset is to create a vision board. And once you've created it, I want you to send it to the free streaming school. You know, I take a picture of it or something and just let us know what you've done. With and I'll hand you back over to the amazing guys at free streaming school. Thank you, Jackson. Right. Real pleasure. Real pleasure. So if you become the UK's version of Oprah, can I become the UK's version of Dr. <laughs> Phil? Is that going to be okay? Let's make that happen. Let's okay. make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> You're going to have to come with different bow ties every week. <laughs> it might be well standard. Don't you worry about that. Don't worry about that. What's the plan for the day apart from supporting mother and baby? Uh, well, so we've got tomorrow, we're going to be having the naming at home tomorrow. So we're setting up the Zoom version of the naming. Um, yeah. so that's going to be happening tomorrow. So I'm planning that. Nice. Well, Michael, Michelle, any variant of that would be a yeah. one. You know? Okay, I'll, I'll think about that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to see you again and uh, I'll see you on Wednesday for my session and I look forward to introducing you on Thursday as well Fields. Wonderful, thank you very much mate Thank you, have a good day You too, bye bye Thanks guys And Nish, I believe we're going to have a five minute break now and then we are on to our media session Now we go straight into our media session Fantastic, I'm glad someone knows what's going on today <laughs> No, it's fine, it's fine It's your first time actually doing it all the way through <laughs> yeah, well, cheers. So, so I'm uh, going to move over to the media session. Um, um, so everyone should be able to see this. It is one of our sessions that isn't live. Um, the only one at the moment, I think. Um, that's because Matt's very busy. Uh, yeah, well, he's still making videos, uh, which is great. Well, this is it, isn't it? You know, if people, I saw a message the other day for someone, I think, trying to antagonize teachers to suggest what they're doing with their day. Well, yeah. Matt, it's a example of someone who is doing everything all day. Exactly. So, I'm just really jealous of this guy. It's his knowledge of media, and it's also his facial hair. I have no chance when it comes <laughs> to growing up. You know, this is me, lockdown day, whatever we're on now. Nothing. If the wind blows in a certain direction at a certain speed, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to play this. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another GCSE Streaming School Media Studies lesson. My name is Matthew Murphy, and today we're going to be going through uh, some more of the technical codes of media studies. We've looked before at stylistic codes, things like mise-en-scene and narrative and, and things like that. Uh, and yes, in yesterday's lesson, which if you haven't watched yet, I'd advise that you did. Uh, yesterday's lesson, we looked at the technical code of diegetic and non-diegetic sound. Um, today's lesson, we're going to look at a different but equally important uh, stylistic code, a code that uh, media makers use in order to create their products. And uh, this particular style, uh, technical code is editing. Um, in obviously hugely important in moving image media things like tv and film and music videos however with so many of today's triple a video games being so story and narrative focused the editing if you like of virtual cameras within uh, video games is just as important and a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today whilst most of them are drawn from moving image media they can just as easily be applied to video games media if that is more uh, the media that you yourself consume. Uh, so rather than uh, go 
around the houses, so to speak. I'll go straight into what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at, again, some new vocabulary. So as I've mentioned previously, it might be a good idea that you have a pen and a piece of paper to make notes on, because that's going to enable your brain to help uh, take this new vocabulary and embed it more deeply in your short-term memory, which will get it better into your long-term memory for retrieval later on, especially in an exam situation. Retrieval of vocabulary is a crucial skill. Um, so, effectively, when we are editing any kind of media product, the person who edits that particular piece of media is in control of where we, in the audience, where we look. If we edit it in a certain way, we can force the audience to look at a certain object or person, or we can force uh, a, an audience to see things in the way that we wish. So editing is hugely important in terms of generating meaning. Effectively, it boils down to that phrase there, that the, the, the editor can effectively uh, make the audience look at specific things. Don't look over there look over here. Um, so that is, it is that that we're going to go into a little more deeper this morning. Uh, I'm going to show you lots of uh, moving examples uh, where you can not only see the um, see the technique but also learn its name so that when it comes up in an exam question you know how to use it in your answers. So, as I mentioned previously, editing is hugely important in terms of connotative effect. In other words, how meaning is generated, which if you've watched any of my streams, you'll know that that phrase, how meaning is generated, sits at the heart of what media studies uh, is about, understanding that concept. So to start with, uh, we'll deal with the most obvious form of editing, the, the, the editing that you yourself as an audience participant would see on a day to day basis. It is what's called continuity editing. And if you like, it's the editing that you don't even notice. It's editing in such a way that the story simply moves forward and each shot follows each one in a in a con in a continuous way so that the narrative continues to make sense. So uh, I could have picked a thousand different clips for this, but I thought I would uh, share this one with you from a recent episode. I'd say I'm hungry again. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Oh, you think you look starving then? Well, let's get you a bag of chips, shall we? Hey, can I help you, mate? <laughs> what? Fella that runs this place. I'm sorry, mate. The car lot's not open today. He'll have to come back tomorrow. I can see that. I'm asking where he is. He saw me that heap of junk yesterday. A moment worth 40,000 pounds. Locked. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the car lot's it's not open today. So you, you'll have to come back tomorrow, right? Come on, then. Yeah, that's it. You cover his back. Walk away. Bunch of crooks and thieves, a lot of ya. So hopefully in that uh, scene, you saw that um, the story continued to flow along. Um, me personally, I'm not uh, an avid watcher of EastEnders, but not being aware of necessarily the, the story arcs that are currently going on, I very quickly picked up the story, the, the the narrative that was being told. Even though that particular section that I showed you is made up of somewhere in the region of between 20 and 30 individual shots. Um, I didn't expect you to, to make a note of that, but each of those shots followed perfectly on from the next one. So in a lot of in a lot of ways, that's a really good example of continuity editing, editing all these individual shots so that the story, the narrative moves forward in an easy to follow way. I guess the opposite of continuity editing, which you may be less familiar with, um, is where a media producer tries to tell a story in a non linear way so the story may happen in a non-sequential order and the, the editing will maybe jump around in terms of different storylines happening at different times and it will be deliberately confusing 
and it, it feels deliberately confusing to us in the audience because we are used to uh, seeing things move forwards just like that in a kind of uh, in a sequential chronological order. So that's at the heart of continuity editing. It's almost that uh, if you notice the editing, it's not uh, it's not continuity editing. Um, the pace at which the editing takes place um, in terms of when the shot changes from one to another can have a huge impact in terms of how meaning is generated. I'm just going to show you 30 seconds from this, albeit quite old film now. But what I want you to do is just, if you can, just click your fingers every time you notice there is a shot change and you'll be amazed at just how quickly you are snapping your fingers just in the space of this 30 seconds. that there so obviously um the the meaning that was trying to be generated there in terms of why was the pace of editing so rapid there obviously it's trying to generate the meaning of excitement there and uh, adrenaline and the pace at which it was edited meaning the rapidity at which things were cut into small chunks every shot lasting a very short amount of time increases the pace at which we see things on the screen and therefore that generates in the minds of the audience that feeling of uh, adrenaline and excitement almost like rapid blinking almost um, and obviously other media producers could then edit that scene in such a way so that it didn't feel as exciting and it didn't feel as full of adrenaline by slowing down that pace of the editing. It has a psychological effect on us in the audience by making everything feel slower if the editing is slower. And by that I mean the, the point at which a cut is made, how often that is. So in, in case that wasn't clear, that's what we mean by pace of editing. How often is a cut made? So moving forwards. Montage uh, is a French term and it is probably best explained simply by seeing what one is. If I show you a montage it will pretty much speak for itself. So I'll just pause it there. We're only halfway through, but I'll just pause it there. Just, you've probably already noticed within this clip that the the same people appear to be in the clip. However, they keep changing their outfits. The reason that is because the time is passing forwards. <laughs> And so within that montage that we just saw, what that montage allows the audience to comprehend is that uh, an, a large amount of time has passed forwards uh, in the space of that montage. And that's simply an editing technique where uh, rather than spend you know, 20 minutes of your time trying to say that, you know, a couple of months has passed. They do lots of rapid fire shots showing you, demonstrating that time has moved forwards. And that is the, the technical name for that is simply a montage. It's another editing technique. Obviously, it still falls under the, uh, the heading of continuity editing, because in that Karate Kid montage that you just saw, um, 
not only did we experience the that time was moving forwards for this young person, but also um, it continued to make sense. Therefore, in order for it to uh, be an effective montage, it's still important that it follows the rules of continuity editing. Cross-cutting is uh, simply another one which um, is easier to show than to explain. So I'll show you an example first. I'll pause it peri periodically just to make certain things super clear for you, and then we'll talk about it some more. You're going to tell us who you work for. So hopefully you've noticed by now that we've got these two seemingly unconnected clips. We've got this, uh, the clo lots of close-ups of a fast-moving car and this kind of interrogation scene. I was always very interested to meet you. Eventually you will tell us about the people you work with. And the longer it takes, the more painful we'll make it. The first thing you should know about us is that we have people everywhere. Am I right? So, in the minds of the audience, as we're perceiving this, these two scenes are happening at the same time. At the same time as this person is being interrogated, this car chase is also happening. And that is effectively what cross-cutting allows uh, an audience to understand. Uh, so it's not exactly like continuity editing, but by putting these two scenes uh, unfolding side by side in tiny little chunks, by cross-cutting these things, it establishes for us in the audience that these two scenes are happening at the same time. Um, and the, the name that we refer to this is cross-cutting. Okay, so let's carry on with uh, in, uh, increasing our understanding of the key vocabulary around um, editing. So, beg pardon. So, the shot reverse shot. Um, this is again one that we have probably, as an audience, seen uh, millions of times because it's a really well used way of recording a conversation. So, the little um, diagram that you can see in the top left hand corner of this slide shows you that if you've got two people sitting across from each other having a conversation and you want to record it you simply put the two cameras uh at 180 degrees apart from each other uh one facing not at one character and the other one on the opposite side focusing on the other character and then when it comes to editing those two clips together you simply cut from one clip to the other uh, usually when that character is speaking or reacting. So that little um, animated GIF that you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the slide is showing you uh, a shot, reverse shot, between these two characters. When the character in the, in the shirt and tie speaks, we see his face and it uses that particular camera. When the, when the guy who's smoking, when he talks, it cuts to his camera. And obviously all of that was filmed at the same time, uh, but in, when it comes to editing, it's cut in that way. And that's referred to as a shot reverse shot, because if you like this particular area, this could be called the shot and this could be called the reverse shot, hence its name. The, ma the match cut. So uh, a match cut is simply where an editor will match one frame or one visual part of uh, one scene with another and the, the true art to the match cut is making it so that the join if you like the edit between those two seemingly different uh, clips is as close to seamless as possible so quite difficult to explain but once you've seen these i'm going to show you three different examples once you've seen them i'm pretty sure that you'll establish what we mean when we use the phrase match cut So what we saw there, we saw the inside of a clock and it very se very seamlessly kind of transitioned, faded into uh, a nighttime shot of the city streets of Paris. And 
where all the cogs were, that's where all the lights were. And it matched up really nicely in a nice aesthetically pleasing way in that the two scenes, although they are completely different, they matched up, hence the name. I'll show you two more examples. any white people in there waiting an hour and 32 minutes for a plate of spaghetti so slightly different there so the match there the, what the editor used there to, to create the match cut is upon that door opening it cut from a lady leaving a shop to a gentleman then coming out of a restaurant and it, you simply use the action of the door opening to, to to use as that as the match cut in the same way that the the city streets and the clock kind of transitioned between each other so did those two door openings even though they weren't happening to the same characters the china had never been used the sheets had never been slept in titanic was called the ship of dreams and it was it really was So really famous example there where you, we see the, the wreck of the Titanic sitting at the bottom of the ocean and then it seamlessly transitions into uh, a CGI computer graphics shot of the real Titanic as if it were still um, still up, uh, still running and on the day that it, on the day that it sank. So it used uh, a combination of computer graphics but also a match cut to uh, to transport us in the audience from the present day back in time to when the Titanic was sailing. So three different examples of what we would call a match cut, but it's simply where visually one scene matches exactly the next one. So, and obviously helps in, in terms of generating meaning, helps us in the audience see very clearly how one scene links to another. An eye line match. So the reason I've done this straight after the match cut is because it's not necessarily the same as a match cut. Uh, the, the, the important thing to take away from an eye line match is it's more about that first word, the eye line, rather than match. Effectively, what we're looking for is when a character looks in a certain direction, the very next shot we see is what that character is seeing. So again, Difficult to explain. Let me show you some examples. So we're looking at this character. And then directly afterwards, we see as if what that character would see. What we are looking at right now, that character in black and red, is effectively what the character in the pit would see. So in terms of continuity editing, that is an eye line match. One shot matches the eye line of the other character. So because time is pressing, I won't show all three examples. I'll show you this. Uh, I'll show you the third and final one on the slide I have here, because I still want to talk about what the task is going to be for you. So the Mark 7 is not ready for deployment. Then skip the spinning rims around the clock. So we have this character here uh, of Iron Man, and he's about to walk down some stairs. So watch very carefully that we see the cat, we see the character of Iron Man looking in a certain direction, and then notice what we then see immediately after his shot of him looking. It even moves in exactly the same motion as he's walking across. It moves at the same speed. The camera effectively matches that character's eye line. And that is simply what we, uh, when we're talking about um, eye line matches, that is exactly what we mean. So, in the same way that when we were talking about technical codes yesterday, uh, when we were looking at sound, I said that. Um, uh, an exam question might ask you to analyze how sound is used to uh, to create meaning in the in the extract. Um, 
in this case, I'm going to take that question and just flip it around a little um, and say, well, what if I change the word sound to the word editing? How would you answer the question, analyze how editing is used in this desk, in this extract to create meaning? Refer to at least two examples in your answer. So using the same clip, um, which again, you might be asked to analyze exactly the same clip in two different ways. What we're looking to do here, is we're looking to analyze how uh, things like the editing uh, and various editing techniques, how they have been used to generate meaning. So again, we'd be looking at a candidate looking to use the correct terminology, things like continuity editing, or any specific things that they can notice like montages or continuity editing, or sorry, uh, montages or um, eyeline matches, um, match cuts, things like that. So, your task uh, for this lesson is simply to take this same clip and analyze it, but this time focusing on using your editing vocabulary. Okay, so I'm just going to talk over it for now because I'm hoping that you're going to notice how the pace of the editing increases at certain points, how there's lots of instances of shot reverse shots where the characters are talking to each other and things like that. I'm not going to go through every single that way, I want, I want the words to come from you to then do that. Okay. So, I hope this lesson's been of use to you. Uh, I hope that, that um, you're able to have a go at those exam questions that I've set. And yeah, I will speak to you and uh, talk to you next week. Perfect. So, thanks to Matt for um, sending us this session. Um, we have run out of time, but he did have the task on the video. I will put up the task on Facebook and on YouTube as well in, in the description so you can have a go. Um, up next, we have a PE session and it will literally be in one minute. So see you in about a minute, Mike. See ya.